All right, hi there. So tonight I am making a video. I forgot that I was babysitting my buddy's dogs this weekend. So if you hear any, if you hear any weirdness in the background, just know that's them. Okay, so sorry about that. Two chihuahuas and a very ger good-natured German Shepherd that could eat the other two of them. Anyway, so here we go. So I want to kind of follow up from the other night. Uh, so you remember we left off with the fundamental theorem of calculus. <laughs> okay, and if you recall, the idea behind that was if you integrate f prime of x dx, right, like this, and we don't normally write f prime, if we integrate f prime, that's the idea of it from a to b, then we end up with cap f of x, and we usually write like this, that's the antiderivative from a to b, and then the final thought process is this is b minus a, and your book always writes it, this is area as a function of x, the idea that, you know, somewhere along here, you're gaining area, right, this is the area function from a to b, so... If you think of it that way, it makes a lot more sense in terms of, because it's obviously area, but in terms of the other part of that. So the derivative of the area, d dx of a of x, okay, the derivative of that is going to be, well, it's going to be d d of this thing from a to x of f of t dt. And recall that this literally just becomes f of x. Okay, that, that's it. That's it. Well, like what? Well, for instance, suppose you had d dx, the integral from 3 to, to x of sine of t dt. Well, this is just sine of x. Okay, This is the function that describes what's going on under the area there. Okay, And it's you're like, wait, all it did was the derivative canceled the integral. Yep. That's all it ever does. That's what's happening. Yeah. So that, this is the fundamental theorem. It's the second portion of it. This is the part of it that makes it to where they, you know, it ties integral and derivative calculus together. It's kind of the whole point. Okay. Um, now where this gets interesting is if you did something like this, take the derivative of the integral from 3 to x, no, the 2x of sine of, two x, of, sine of x dx, not sine of x, sine of t, sorry, sine of t, dt, and you're like, oh, well, this is easy, this is simply going to be sine of 2x, uh, not so fast, because remember, this has to do with the rate of change of area, my x's are getting big twice as fast as they were before, we're not doing x, we're doing 2x, and so what we're going to end up doing is if we're going to multiply by 2, this is the chain rule in essence, yes? So it's 2 sine of 2x. Okay? I don't know, man. Wish I could make it harder. Can't really make it harder. Let me pause for a second here. Sorry, I forgot where I left off there. Anyway, so there we have some of that business. Okay? Um, so some of the problems you'll see on the homework, on the, quest, on the test, or the quiz coming up, will be... Um, Like this guy here. So again, 3 sine x plus 6 uh, x squared minus 3 e to the x dx from 2 to 4. Okay, so we do this. Okay, from whence did cosine, from whence did sine come? That's minus 3 cosine x plus be 3 2x cubed but you don't know that so you write 6x cubed over 3 and then minus 3 e to the x now remember you're tempted to write plus c but because we have limits of integration we simply do this number here okay now here's a cute trick that i enjoy because because it makes my life a little easier i'll type all this in more than once, so what I like to do is I just go minus 3 cosine x uh, plus 2x cubed minus 3e to the x, such that x equals 4. 
and then such that x equals 2. And then if I take this fella minus this one, I get negative 28.9. Does that make sense? Probably. Let's go look at Desmos. See what, Bet see what Desmos has to say about this. Oh, just a minute. I'm at my buddy's house. There's all this junk typed in. Don't steal his Wi-Fi if you go over. Did it work? Did it work? Did it work? Yay, maybe. Hey, it worked. How about that? So, uh, if you go to desmos.com, type in three cosine x, or three sine x, rather, uh, plus six x squared. Oops, not six, six x. Oops. 6x squared, damn it, uh, x squared, a boy, minus 3e e to the x, and look, we're going from 2 to 4, well, yeah, how about that, most that's below the x-axis, so negative makes sense to us there, yeah, yeah, that's awesome, so we love that, we love that, it, again, we love that, graphically speaking, like, geez, why is that negative, well, because it makes sense. Okay, um, and if you had somebody like this, apparently I'm stuck on threes again. That's what happens to me from time to time. One to three, it's going to be x cubed, or if you prefer, three x cubed over three. Okay, minus five x squared over two from one to three. That's going to be 27 minus that's going to be 75 over 2. Minus parentheses 1 minus 5 over 2. And so if you do that, you can go to any number of ways you want to. 1 minus 5 over 2, that's negative. This is 2 and a half. This is negative 1 and a half. It's positive 1 and a half then. Okay. And this is 27 and a half. So it's negative a half. So the answer is 1. Does that make sense? I don't know. 3x squared. Minus 5x. There it is. And we're going from, what did I say? So we're going from 1 to 3. Well, from 1 to 3, as you can see, from 1 to almost 2, it's all negative. See that? And uh, if you plug in the value there, x equals 3 like so well you can start doing the math on this okay and and see where you sit on these guys uh it looks like about i don't know if i was a bet man this area down here below the axes sure looks like it's about negative you know whatever negative uh well it's about negative one and a half negative two ish almost and then up here this is well, that's one, two. There's about two above the axis. Is about one and a half below. Look at that. It comes out to be a half. Yeah, or yeah, I don't know. I, I at least we're in a ballpark, okay? So sometimes when I look at that, I think to myself, well, sometimes you can talk yourself out of it. In fact, it's something else you could do if a guy really wanted to, you can find out where that guy is. So from zero to two thirds, uh, to one and two thirds is all negative. So Oops, not from 0 to 2 thirds. I meant from 1 to 2 thirds, huh? Sorry, x equals 1. I know it was messing me up. I was going all the way to 0. There we go. There we go. So there's just a little bit of negative here. There we go. And then the positive here gives you a 1 difference. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. I was thinking from 0 to 2, not zero, not 1 to 2. Yay. Okay, so that's pretty easy to do. Um, yeah. So we're doing a ton of these. We'll be having fun with them. Um, again, if you ever were bored to tears, you're like, Jay, I want to do you know, midpoint rule to check myself. Okay, that's fine too. Uh, what we will be doing next week, uh, we're going to be doing some more of these guys. Let me pause for a sec. All right, so here's a problem that's right there on your textbook. So like we're going to look at number 20 here just for fun. So 2t plus 5. So we have 
got two T plus five. We're gonna write that in here, I guess. That's what we're gonna do. DT, this is D DX. And we're integrating from zero to X. Okay, so the first thing we do is we're gonna find the area function. Okay. So find and graph the area function. Okay. So let's uh, go ahead and do that real quick. So here's 2t plus 5. Okay. Remember, this is the area function. And we're going from 0 to x. Okay. Well, what does that mean when I do? Oops. Sorry. Sorry. We need to find the area. We need to find and graph the area function. If you look at it, that's what I wrote down. There you see that. It's just the, it's just the uh, integral piece. Okay. What does that mean? Well, it means I need to integrate this piece. I need to integrate it. And so that's going to be t squared plus 5t. From 0 to x. That's going to be x squared plus 5x. Minus 0 is just 0. This is the area function. Okay? That's the area function. Okay, this is area as a function of x, of course, plus c, no, not plus c, not, you're like, oh, I want to put plus c, no plus c, because again, we have limits of integration. Now, if you come back here, it says, uh, that's cool, now you need to verify that a prime of x is f of x. Um, yeah, the derivative of this is 2x plus 5, okay, which is the same as that, okay? Now, would it have mattered had this been from 1 to x? The answer is no, but, no, but, your area function would end up being then minus 1 plus 5, so minus 6. Take the derivative of that, you still get 2x plus 5. In other words, this part here doesn't matter. Okay. So again, it's the rate at which that area is changing. That's what they're talking about on that problem. Okay. Uh, the definite integral is pretty easy to do there. I don't need to do any more of those, I don't think. Lots more definite integrals. Remember, sometimes some of these are... Some of these are... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Some of them are the easier ones. Are the, the seemingly easier ones are harder than they look. This one here, this... Secant squared, that's easy. What is secant squared the derivative? As well, it's derivative of tangent. So these other ones, like 52, we'll look at him. 2s uh, minus 4 over s cubed. 2s minus 4 over s cubed ds. From where to where? 1 to 2. All right, first thing you do is you want to do is you want to break this into two pieces. 2s over s squared minus 4 oops, over s squared. Okay, and we'll just treat them as separate functions. This is really just 2s to the minus 1 minus 4s to the minus 2 ds. And then let's go to integrating. So technically, 2 over, I should probably just leave this as 2 over s. That's an easier way to see this. Hey, that's the same as... Oh, damn it. That's the same thing as saying one, oh, 1 over x, right? Well, the derivative of 1 over x is um, the natural log. So this is 2 ln of s minus... Now, this would be add 1 to the exponent, so this is 4 s to the minus 1 over minus 1. That's 4 over s. And then you just simply evaluate it from 1 to 2. Okay, not very hard, but the tricky part with that one is knowing that I should split that into two pieces. Once you see that, you can't unsee it. It's just one of those things. Okay. Uh, nice. Match the functions f whose graphs are A to D with the area functions. Oh, nice, look at that. Look at this, look at it, 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 on number one there. Okay, uh, when you start looking at these things, yeah, it becomes pretty clear what's happening here. Um, 
the original functions a to d are the derivatives of the other ones. Okay. So you look at those, you're like, oh, how's that going to work out exactly? Um, and then a to d is down here on the next page. That was freaking me out just a little bit, not going to lie. So it looks like a matches up with like c. See that? And uh, D is going to match up with, uh, B is going to match up with big B, looks like. No, it's not. Big B is going to match up with, yeah, big B is going to match up with big, yes. Yeah, little B is going to match up with big B, and so on and so on, okay? Uh, that seemed pretty easy and trivial. Let's move on to a couple more other ones, okay? And then home to the races, there you go. Uh, of course, we mentioned in class last time, hey, this guy here, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. This is a half circle. That is the equation of a half circle is the square root of 16 minus x squared. I'm telling you right now, if you integrate 16 minus x squared dx, from negative four to four, you had better get, well, that'd be pi r squared. So 16 times pi divided by two, so it should get eight pi. But j, that's half a circle, I know exactly. But how does this integrate to that? Well, stick with us, friends. That's one of those ugly ones, okay? And it's one of those ones when you see, you're like, oh, this is what we do for that because yeah, it's ugly. Okay, but it's going to be a while. So just kind of keep that in the back of your head as we go along. I think I mentioned I, I drew a couple of trapezoids in class or triangles. Those are all easy ones to deal with. This one's a little harder. We know what the answer has to be. We just don't know how to get there yet. Okay. And then I want to do a couple from section 5.4, I believe. And... That's weird me out that the dogs are so quiet. I'm not hating on it. It just feels weird. I feel like they're going to be barking and annoying me, but they're not. Good for them. Okay. Uh, again, we mentioned uh, in class about odd and even functions. If you recall, an odd function, an odd function has origin symmetry. That is whatever you see at negative x. It has the negative y value of whatever you'd see at positive x. They're opposites. Okay. This one here is what we refer to as, as y-axis symmetry. So that guy is uh, an even function. And so if you saw one of these in a dark alley, for instance, uh, yeah, let's do this uh, 5 sine theta. Well, if I did 5 sine theta d theta from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. Well, sine of theta looks like this. Bleep. Bleep. And we're going from here to here. Clearly the answer is 0 because symmetry. Yes? It's going to be negative, positive, 0. Yay! Okay. Uh, no, I kind of dig in that one. Let's look at number 24. 1 minus the cube, 1 minus negative 2, 2. Okay, let's look at the graph of that. I don't know off the top of my head. Oh, yeah, baby. So what are we doing? We're doing it from negative 2 to 2. It's just twice what it is from negative 2 to 2, or twice what it is from 0 to positive 2. Okay? So you're like, oh, well, how am I going to find that one? Good question. So when we do these guys, okay, these absolute value functions, you're like, oh, I bet it's going to be 1 minus absolute value of x to the 4th over four like that, right? I bet that's what it's going to be. I bet that's going to be x. It has to be x. Let's see if that makes sense to us here, shall we? 
Let's do x. Oh, quit your whining. Minus the absolute value of x. Nope. Minus the absolute value of x to the 4. Okay, you're like, oh, gee, that looks weird. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, divide by 4. Mm -hmm. You're like, ah, oh, that looks weird. Sure does. It sure does. So, it's one of those ones where, um, yeah, that's not better. Hang on. I'm doing something wrong. I'm going to hold my mouth right. Yep, I wasn't on my mouth right. So, first things first. Let me just back this one up here for a minute. If you look at this guy here, this is just x, right? What is the antiderivative of x? That would be x squared over 2, yes? This guy here is negative x. So, his is going to be negative x squared over 2, right? But what if I put these two functions together? Well, those are the absolute value of x. And if I take the absolute value of x and integrate it, well, I need to get both this guy and that guy. So the absolute value when you integrate it is x times absolute value x over 2. When you do that, the x is still negative or positive. The other one's always positive. Hence, it will change signs on the negative side. This is where my mistake was made right here. This should have been minus x absolute value of x cubed. Okay, I knew it looked funny. As soon as I grabbed it, I was like, that isn't right. But by the way, is it pretty obvious why it's not right? Of course it is, because uh, math makes sense. God help us, we love math. Mm-hmm. 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 Mucho better. Nice. Nice. Exactly. That's good stuff right there, bud. Okay, so what does that do for us? Well, it's gonna we're gonna end up getting rid of um, when we start doing these guys. We're in it. That is the antiderivative. Now you evaluate it at the top end. So if I evaluate this at two, I'm gonna get x equal two x equal two. I'm gonna get da 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 negative two, and at positive two, I'm gonna get two. Okay, and so when I do that. Uh, if I do it from zero, okay, let me back to up here. When I do this, it's going to cancel each other out. In other words, so what I'm trying to say, with, I'm doing a piss poor job of that, is this, the answer is zero, okay? But why is the answer zero? Because, the answer is zero because, yay, if we evaluate this from negative two to two, we will see if we're going to get two minus, that is uh, two to the six, that's 16, so minus 16 over 4 is minus 4. Okay, minus. And then on the bottom end, this is where it gets tricky. It's going to be negative 2. And then you're going to put the negative 2 in there. You're going to get what? That's going to be... This, this is always going to be positive 8. Then this is going to be positive 2 is plus 16 fourths. So plus 4. And lo and behold, what do you get? Well, you get negative 2. Well, you get uh, negative 2, and you get uh, positive 2, and the answer is negative 4. Just a minute. I'm losing my mind. Sometimes the picture helps. Sometimes the picture hurts. It is, it is negative 4. Okay, so let's go back and let's look at just get rid of this for a second. And let's put in x equal, ne x equal negative 2. And it seems like it's pretty clear that there's less area below the axis than there is above the axis. Um, and, that's, and that's what we're seeing here. And so there's actually negative 4 is the max. Now, if you did this, you could also... Anyway, the part about symmetry that was going to happen was is this is equal to 2 times the integral from 0 to 2 of 1 minus x cubed like this dx. You get the same thing. Because what you'd end up with, you end up with is negative 2... You didn't have a 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4. Okay, that's the symmetry argument on that guy. Gonna kind of muddled that up. Apologize. I'm losing my marbles. Okay. Nice. Uh, now, um, I do want to talk about average value. This is one thing we didn't get to talk about in class. And I want to make sure I cover this. This is the easiest thing that you will ever do. In this class. I mean, maybe the easiest thing you'll ever do in your entire life. 
You thought it was falling off a log. You thought the easiest thing on the planet was, I don't know, waking up. You thought the easiest thing on the planet was, I don't know. I have no idea what you thought, but no, this is it right now. If I take the integral of 2x plus x squared or something, dx from 0 to 3. If I do the antiderivative, I'm going to get x squared plus x cubed over 3, 0 to 3. That's going to be 9 plus 9 minus 0 is 18. And you're like, yeah, I guess, Jay. My question to you, sir, madam, what is the average value of the function? Well, what do you mean? Well, what I mean is this, sir, ma'am. Check this out. We just said that from 0 to 3, we have bloop, some area, and the area is equal to 18. But notice that the area, the bottom of this box is what? It's 3. And from here to here, it's 3. What does that say about the average height of the box? In other words, if a guy were to make a box across here, and this bit here would fit into here, make a perfectly boxed thing with an area of 18, that means literally, this is divided by 3 because 0 to 3, 6 would be what we call our average value. It's that easy. Okay? Wait, I'm finding an area. I already know the width because, you know, 0 to 3. All I have to do is divide. Facts. Facts. And in fact, this is how the big kids write it. The average value of the function is equal to the integral from a to b of f of x dx divided by b minus a. That's it. But what you're doing is you're dividing by a width, you're getting a height. Ta-da! Ta-da! All right, do a couple more of those. For instance, number eh, 28. 28, 1 over x cubed from 1 to 2. 1 over x cubed from 1 to 2 dx. Well, that we know is x to the minus 3. And so we're simply going to add 1. So that's x to the minus 2. Divide by minus 2 from 1 to 2. So that really becomes negative 1 half. Well, negative 1 over 2x squared is what it becomes, yes? And so that 2, that's going to be negative 1 eighth minus, and then minus a uh, half. So that 3 eighths, 0.375 if you're a fractophobe. Now notice that that right there, that's the height of the function. Or that's the area of the function. Now I'm going to now divide by 2 minus 1, which is just 1. So 3 eighths is also the average value. It's only the average value because it's over a one unit span. Okay. Let me know if you need any help. Bye.